Hello and welcome. I've been asked how I created this swamp environment that I posted recently on different social media channels. And I thought it's not so helpful if I create something like a speed level design video or something that explains it step by step, but something that more captures the essential of the process so that you can replicate it for your own environment. And especially if it comes to low poly, you're facing two challenges. It's much harder in low poly to capture a certain atmosphere or convey a certain emotion because you don't have the richness of higher poly or even photorealistic scenarios. And the other thing is I'm using a lot of assets from the asset store and then you constantly face the challenge that you create something unique, something that doesn't look like as if you acquired it just and put it into your game. By the way, this scene is from our game Beans or Bones, a two-player online co-op game and if you like it, we already have a Steam page, so feel free to put it on your wishlist. So I'm mainly using the Pirates pack from Sinti for our game. But while I love the Sinti assets, looking at the demo scene, it doesn't provide any emotional or atmospheric richness. So I was wondering, can I capture the essential of a mangrove swamp with these assets? So I googled for images of mangrove swamps, and here you see some of them. And what is the essential that you see? First of all, it's kind of greenish color that dominates the whole scenery. Then what I found very interesting was this clean separation between water and vegetation. Something I didn't realize beforehand. Then you see the water is calm and the vegetation is very dense. And from the color perspective you have a brown tone on the bottom through the roots and green through the leaves on the top. And also the trees build a kind of arcway or arcade so you hardly see any sky peeking through. And I think this is very essential for this kind of greenish swamp-like atmosphere. So let's dive into Unity and see how I try to replicate this atmosphere and the scenery. So what I will show you is basically my complete terrain and vegetation workflow. So I'm starting with the standard Unity Terrain. I'm using the Gaia Stamper, but basically that's it what I'm using from Gaia. And for my swamp, I created this plateau that's slightly above sea level and has a diameter of about 200 meters. And then I used the standard terrain tools to carve these channels into this plateau. I'm using the Crest Ocean System and my sea level is 40 meters. This is not a low poly shader, but it just looks so nice, so I'm using it for my environment. And then I'm using the Polaris low poly terrain engine to convert the standard terrain into a low poly mesh. And I've chosen Polaris basically for one single reason. Very often low poly environments look very regular because the terrain mesh is regular. And Polaris allows to add a randomized displacement for all the vertices, giving it a more natural look. And here you see that this process keeps this clear channel structure, even if I apply a rough mesh on it. So that's the basic mesh terrain, including the ocean. And for the vegetation, I'm using Vegetation Studio Pro for several reasons. First of all, it allows to define biomes so that are areas with different vegetations. So here you see the biome mask for my swamp. It allows to procedural place vegetation on this biome and very important it allows for instantiated rendering of all the vegetation items. It also gives me a lot of control on the render distance and things like that, which is very important in this very dense vegetation that I'm creating in the swamp environment. So let me show you the vegetation that I'm using. First of all, I'm using two different kinds of mangrove trees coming with a pirate pack. The engine automatically scales and rotates the items randomly. And what you see is, I've chosen a very short render distance, so in the back you don't see trees even they are placed there, because in the final scene the vegetation is so dense that you anyway will not see the trees in the back. So this is a very important performance measure. Then I place some of these dead swamp trees. They come from the Sinti Nature Pack. And then I place some grass to create some more dynamic and some more details. And also to add more green to the overall look. And finally I place this 
larger trees with the vines that provide this kind of rooftop that I described in the images before. And here I had to use some trick. So all the parts of this tree come with the pirate's pack. We have the tree base, we have the canopy and we have the vines. I created a game object that includes all the different parts as child game objects. But the issue with this tree is that I cannot instantiate it on the GPU for rendering because you only can instantiate single meshes. So I found a little tool on the internet that allows me to plug in this game object with multiple child objects and it generates me a single combined mesh. So what you see in the scene is this combined mesh and this can be instantiated for rendering on the GPU. There's one more thing. Besides the grass, I don't want to have any plants placed in my channels. So that's why I created this blind mask that allows me to define in Vegetation Studio Pro that there are no trees planted in this area. So this is how my environment looks after I've done all the placement of the vegetation. And now to intensify the swamp feeling, I had to add some fog to my environment. As a sky and weather system, I'm using Enviro and this allows me to define weather zones. So the box that you see here is my weather zone for the swamp. And what I've did is I added mainly some green fog to this. So this is how it looks like putting it all together. Here you see also some bubbles that I added that I emitted from the swamp. The final step is to add some post-processing and play around with the lighting. But actually, so far I haven't put much thought into it. So thanks for watching and hope you got some inspiration how you can recreate a certain scenery in your game. And if you like to see more, give it a thumb up and subscribe to this channel. And see you next time.